So let's start. So good morning and welcome to ICT SSH once more. Uh, also welcome to the agile development of the SSH Open Marketplace User Workshop uh, featuring Ron Decker from CESDA Shock and EOS Executive Board, Dan Bruder from Clarin, Laura Barbeau from Daria, Matej Durko from the Austrian Center of Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage, and our four testers, Agnieszka Sulinska from the Institute of Polish Language Studies, Vanessa Hanneschläger from the Austrian Center of Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage, Maurizio Toscano from the University of Granada, and Kasia Karpinska from Odyssey, the Open Data Infrastructure for Social Sciences and Economic Innovation. So my name is Marika Willems from Trust IT, uh, Shock Communication and Dissemination Lead, and I'll be moderating today's online workshop. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for joining us all. So here you see some, some of the social media handles that uh, we'll be using uh, in today's uh, promotion around uh, this uh, online workshop. So prior to getting started, I'd like to review a few technical details uh, pertaining to this uh, online workshop. So first, uh, you're in listen-only mode, uh, meaning that you can hear me, you can hear the speakers, uh, but, you can't, uh, but we can't hear you. So this prevents anyone online uh, from hearing any unnecessary uh, background noise. Uh, but we would like to invite you uh, to pose your comments and questions in the chat box that is located at the lower uh, half of the, in, of the Zoom interface. Um, and we plan on ask, um, answering your questions after the speaker's presentations, but we, we encourage you to, uh, to type in comments and questions at any time. Uh, if, if we are not able to answer all the questions uh, during the workshop, uh, we'll definitely follow up with you offline. So then rest me to say, that the, the session is being recorded and the slides and recordings uh, will be available in the shock channels uh, and, and also probably ICT SSH channels uh, uh, in the coming days. Then our goals of today, uh, the SSH open marketplace has been in development uh, for over a year now. The preference is given to an agile approach of the UX best uh, practices. So that means that we've been involving uh, users as much as possible. Uh, so today we'll be realizing the internal, we'll be releasing the uh, internal alpha version and we'll yet uh, need more user feedback and engagement. So today we'll be looking to raise your awareness on how the SSH open marketplace can help researchers in their daily activities, uh, in their, in their daily activities in research and supplement the existing EOS services and to collect feedback from the SSH research community on the functionality and content of the SSH open marketplace. So uh, when ICT SSH went virtual, uh, this meant also a change for the workshop. So we, uh, we, have, uh, we have two mechanisms to collect feedback. So the first mechanism is our four, very first four testers. Uh, they're from big different SSH domains and expertise. They have one week to test and they'll provide their feedback in the roundtable discussion uh, in the second half of this, uh, of this uh, online workshop, but more about that uh, with Matej Durko. So there's a second mechanism and that entails you. So there's online polls via Mentimeter. So we would like to get to know you and ask uh, and, 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 who, and let, understand who you are. And then there's a chat on Zoom that uh, we prefer over the Q&A function uh, because it allows uh, better engagement with you. Uh, and, uh, and with, with the, the speakers uh, for today. So this is us uh, hoping that we'll get the same kind of engagement, uh, even though we're online. Um, so this is today's agenda. So the first speaker is Ron Decker. Uh, he will tell us all about what, is, what are EOSC and shock and what's in it for you. Then Dan Bruder from Claren will uh, talk about opening up the domain of SSH services and tools. How can we, connect technologies and researchers, and what is the SSH open marketplace and what is it not, will be uh, explained by Laura Barbeau from Daria. And then we have uh, the main part of this workshop will be the round table led by Marte Durko uh, with end users uh, view on the SSH open marketplace content, and then we'll be wrapping up. So uh, Marte will, will uh, present all of the, the, the testers extensively. So Agnieszka Sulinska, Vanessa Hanneschläger, Maritza Toscano and Kasia Karpinsaka. Thank you again for, for joining us. Um, oh, sorry. Then I would like to ask um, Irena, we have an online poll that, uh, sorry, 
uh, by mistake, uh, we move to Ron Decker. So Ron, um, I would like to present you short. Um, you're going to tell us all about EOSC and Shock. So Ron Decker is the director of CESDA ERIC, the Consortium of Social Science Data Archives. CESDA is a European infrastructure with 17 members and combines the work of expertise of the country's social science and data service providers. So Ron studied economics and worked for 10 years in labor market research at Dutch universities. Um, and he was at the National Research Council for almost 20 years, uh, running a data agency, program committees, and in general management. So this included secondment to the Dutch uh, government for project leadership on open science in the Dutch EU presidency in 2016 and uh, as national expert at the European Commission in Brussels in 2017. So now Ron is coordinator of the SHOCK project and a member of the executive board of the European Open Science Cloud. So Ron, the floor is yours. I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you, uh, Marike. I will start sharing my screen. because I can't see it anymore. It's, it's on now? It's on, but it's not in presentation mode yet. Yes, no. now it is. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Marike. Thank you, organizers. Um, it's a pity we can't be in Amsterdam, but uh, on the other hand, this, uh, I think there is a huge audience now for this conference, so that, that might be one of the benefits of uh, having these online meetings. Uh, as I have only 10 minutes and it's already eight, eight over, uh, I, I will start immediately um, explaining some abbreviations. And uh, I'm aware that I should never use these in the title, but we are so common to EOSC and shock that I just did. I, I will try to uh, tell something about these two items and hope to focus on the point, uh, what's in it for you as a researcher or a data specialist. Um, shock to summarize, it's a big project uh, financed by the European Commission. We have 44 partners. Uh, it, we are about halfway of the project. And in a nutshell, we try to provide the social data part of EOSC. And, uh, with social data, we mean social sciences, data from social sciences, humanities, cultural heritage. So it's, it's very broad. And we will zoom into uh, this uh, marketplaces as one of the applications of this project later on. Um, what is SHOCK? Uh, SHOCK is uh, one of the five projects financed by the European Commission. Uh, there are for others uh, and we cover almost all disciplines. So we have environment, escape is on astronomy, uh, life sciences, Panosk is on, on physics, and we have shock for social sciences, humanities, cultural heritage. Uh, two of my colleagues from, from an environment and life, they made this picture, uh, trying to explain what this EOSC, this European Open Science Cloud is about. And they think, we think that it is about open science as uh, starting from this policy on open science, uh, describing a new approach of doing science. This is combined with services from e-infrastructures, so computing, networking, uh, storage uh, services, and it is combined with data from the scientific communities, from the researchers, from the uh, research infrastructures. And what EOS tries to do is to be the glue between these uh, parts and to combine, for example, e-infrastructure services with data services. And Ursula von der Leyen, the, the, the the president of the European Commission, she defined it at the World Economic Forum as a trusted space for researchers. Mm. And trust, I think, is very important because you must be able to trust the data you work with. And that's not trivial. I think especially in social sciences, it's, it's not trivial. Um, and 
Another feature I want to point out is the interlinking. It's the combination of data that, that will be the value added, even combinations from, from other, other disciplines. Um, and it's about storing data, but it is also about reusing data. And uh, to go into what is EOSC, as stated, it is trusted. It is virtual, meaning that it's not one single infrastructure. It can be everywhere. And that, that's the buzzword federated. Uh, sometimes the buzzword is also used to, to stress that it won't be new, new research infrastructures, but it will be a clever, uh, a smart combination of existing infrastructures. What I think is important too, it's covering the whole data cycle. And with that, I also mean the, the left part of, of this picture where it says concept and collection and processing of data. That should also be in, in this ecosystem. Not only the reusing of the data, but also uh, more cooperation, more uh, communication about how you, how you uh, construct these data. And I think EOSC will mean that data should become more easily findable. And then we have the FAIR acronym, accessible, interoperable, reusable. I think especially interoperability on data is, is a challenge. Because if I look within social sciences, I can see the struggle we already have in setting up uh, agreed metadata profiles. And what will happen if you start combining with life sciences or environment sciences? How, how can we inform each other? How can we in, inform researchers how to deal with these data? And another feature I, I think is important is the connection between publications, data, and software. In, in this EOSC, uh, I think it will become obligatory that uh, your data have, a, have an identifier, have a DOI, um, and that will increase the visibility of, of your data and also to connect data with the publication. Um, I think that that will become more and more important also to stress that valid research output is not only a publication, but a good software program, a, a, a trusted high quality data set can also be a research output. Um, to finalize on this EOSC, um, what's the functionality? And if you get into these EOSC documents, you will find this term EOSC core. Um, as I said, it's a, first it's a framework for policy. Um, but I want to highlight the two items, fair data and related services, because I, as Marike said, EOSC is supposed to be for researchers. They are the end users. So we are, uh, making this uh, infrastructure, this ecosystem, if you want, we want to make this available for researchers to do better research. And for that, on fair data, yes, we will have a combination of research infrastructures that, that take care of making this data fair to, uh, to the archive and to the data curation, but also to have data catalogs to find the data, to have uh, secure environment where you can process the data and also to have uh, agreement on how to use the data, especially in social data, uh, they are very often sensitive, they need to be secure and you must have agreements on this. Related services is about the, the e-sciences, so storage, computing, uh, networking. And it should be clear if they offer these services, what they offer, uh, which problem they address, how they can be accessed, uh, whether uh, they are free for use or should be paid. Uh, because we distinguish uh, free for use on data and, and services, but we also know that 
some services have to be paid for and that can be uh, can, can um, and, and no because we want to be inclusive we want to make sure that all stakeholders in this in this field in this ecosystem of data publication software can participate in this EOSC including commercial services in the end uh, some other features are metrics that's about if you offer a service then you get feedback on the on the usage uh, of uh, who is using it how many people are using it there is a centralized help desk that connects for example with the help desk from from sesda and there is a portal where you can access all these facilities uh, this portal will be one of many um, because you can also uh, um, uh, imagine that by shock or the SESDA portal, you, you can have access to the social data. Um, what, what will shock do for, for, for this EOSC? Um, as I said, we want to try to be the, the, the social data part and that includes uh, humanities, heritage, science and we want to provide these infrastructures. We want to maximize reuse. And let's not forget, um, people think of infrastructures as technical facilities, but I think infrastructures require a lot of training. If you want to get acquainted as a social scientist with environment data, with uh, life science data, you might need training to get, to, to get familiar with these data. And some of the data are very complex by themselves. They, they go over time, over countries. So it, uh, it, it needs some training. And in order to make this uh, EOSC uh, sustainable, we need to have a governance model. Who's taking care of what, who pays, and you have to arrange this. So finally, uh, what's in it for you? Um, with EOS, you can have access to data from all the domains. It is, and that, that's another buzzword in, in, in the Brussels area, composability. With that, we mean that you can mix your own service. You can pick data, you can pick services, and you can, could, should be able to create your own environment. For example, if we look at smart cities, which uh, takes... Uh, multi-disciplines into account. You would like to have commuting data, GPS data, the way of transport, and you need some storage and, and computation facilities. And it's about offering data and tools and services. So to increase, also to increase visibility of research output, not just the publications, but also your data. You get the metrics uh, about the usage and there are some facilities like the portal and also the marketplace, but I stop here because marketplace will be dealt with with uh, the next uh, speakers. So thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thanks. Thank you very much. And uh, questions for one can be put in the in in the chat if you have them, uh, and we'll come back to them uh, in the roundtable discussion as well. Um, so. Um, Next speaker is Dan Bruder. Dan, uh, while you are preparing your slides, I'll, I'll briefly present you. So Dan Bruder from Claren has a background in electrical engineering and signal analysis. And he has a long career working uh, on research infrastructure, working in different capacities at different Claren centers. Um, so he has been involved in projects uh, in national and European projects, such as Claren, Dashis, Partenos, UDAT projects. And he was responsible convener for ISO standards on metadata and persistent identifiers. And in shock, uh, Dan Bruder leads the work on lifting technologies and services into the SSH cloud. Dan, uh, thank you for joining. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Marike. Uh, first, let me also make a disclaimer. I saw that in Ron's presentation, and I want to make it too. All opinions expressed are my own. I think. <laughs> We should all have that on our slides. Okay, in my presentation, I would like to uh, discuss the challenges and the, um, the requirements uh, or, uh, for, for connecting um, uh, researchers and, and services. Um, it's already 
I think more than 10 years ago that the term data deluge were, was coined for a situation where uh, technologies permitted creation of ever more data. And uh, this, of course, poses challenges for, uh, uh, let's say, having adequate storage capacity, have computation capacity. Um, but I think for services and tools, a similar but lesser trend exists. Not so much with uh, the, the storage and the computation facilities, but rather with respect to registration uh, of, and description of services, uh, but also in supporting users to find the right tool, service or procedure. Um, I think it's helpful uh, to, to, to look at possible solutions if we uh, go back in time a bit. Uh, so let's compare research data and practices in the past, maybe a bit longer ago than 10 years. Let's call it sharing, pre-sharing age. So in, in uh, earlier times, researchers interacted mostly with that they knew personally. And data sets were not always publicly available, often pointed out uh, by colleagues or handed over by colleagues. Uh, there were not many online services and software was created in uh, limited groups uh, for a limited group and, and for a limited purpose. And uh, source code also in general was not often publicly uh, shared. So these are not the best conditions for uh, open science and reproducible science. Uh, sharing and use of data and tools uh, on the basis of personal recommendation and trust, there was trust, uh, was limited, but it offered, it offered some good things. Namely, you could get expert detailed advice and if things went wrong, there was a door to knock on, right? Um, let me go to the next slide. So, the situation is, is very different today. We, we live in blessed times, almost, I would say. So, we can and tend to store and publish almost everything these days. Uh, data sets are hosted online by large and smaller centras, data publication infrastructures, and they're also shared through. Uh, called uh, private channels as uh, private websites and, and cloud storage. Also, software development technology has enormously improved and there is much more software available. Um, but it's not always evident where you have to look, so which discovery service you would have to use. And it's not always evident how to look for this, depending on the discovery service, you need some metadata expertise. And if you finally find something, it's not always clear what's the status of that or what's the quality of that. And I think it has also a lot to do with that the organizational distance, I may call it like that, between the provider and user, effective advice and feedback. I think it's part of a general problem of finding the right information on the internet. There's too much information, there are too many choices. Uh, so what's the status of information? What's its quality? And can you trust the provider? Trust, as I said, is an important thing. There are a few general approaches and solutions that should be helpful also in the research domain find a few essential differences. So if you look to online shops, you have uh, certification, you have consumer reviews, uh, but remember of research, the relation between uh, the consumer, the relation is not always simple between the provider and the consumer. The provider and the consumer can be both researchers that are also colleagues and competitors. This uh, makes, the, makes the thing a bit more complex. The same with internet fora, blogs, where you need community maintenance, moderated debate, and individual expert involvement. In the research domain, we need 
professional involvement in such tasks. And this is work that's not always properly acknowledged or rewarded. In case of the SSH domain, and I have to say that not, not much of what I'm saying is very SSH specific, although I would say the SSH are maybe a bit more diverse than are the neighboring uh, research fields. Um, although the grass always looks greener um, in the neighbor's garden. Um, what can we do? What do we need to improve usability, quality and trustworthiness of service and tool information? What would we need? Well, I think, first of all, we need registries supporting service and tool discoveries. These registries should, should have high rich metadata also for tools and services. We are not so far yet we have that rich metadata for tools and services as we have it, for instance, for data. And how rich should that metadata be? Well, ideally it should maybe be as rich as the advice that you could get from your neighbor researcher in earlier times. Um, you should get usage and quality information based on texting or actual use in research. Uh, you should show user feedback also when it's controversial. Of course, in a fair way, but never, nevertheless, the debate about what's offered on the internet should be a bit more explicit. And important, of course, trustworthy registry, where you find that information should be trustworthy. Those registries should be community managed, close to the stakeholders, and there should be a short organizational distance with the users. And there should be sufficient support from community organizations, its members, and uh, we should make those support activities worthwhile. And I mean, if you have such, such registries, that's all fine, but we also should have info components that are aware of the registered information. Now, what's happening? With respect to that, I have lots of things that can help, but I want to point out three things. First of all, we have a support action for trust field certification of certain centers. It's important that you can trust the centers where you find your data, where you can find your tools. Then, I think it's also important that where possible, we are able to configure our infrastructure components, for instance, the shock switchboard, uh, with information that can help the users. For instance, a shock switchboard, if you integrate it in some data catalogs, will help the users that are using those data catalogs in finding the right services that can be useful for specific data resources. And then, of course, the advanced discovery services, the SSH open marketplace, which is, I think, the big topic of the But going into that, I leave that to Laurie, the next presenter. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, so also questions for Dan, please add them to the chat. We're very curious about your, uh, your questions and your, your comments. Uh, and you're very welcome to, to, to post them. So now the next speaker is Laura. While Laura is preparing yeah. to set up her presentation, um, I'll, pre I'll briefly present you, Laura. So Laura Barbeau is a European project officer at, the Dar at Daria and coordinates the work on the SSH open marketplace developed in the SHOCK project. So prior to joining Daria, she was general secretary of a French research infrastructure for social science and humanities, the social sciences and humanities centers network and worked as European project manager for the University of Toulouse uh, and for the CNRS. Laura has a background in French and German philosophies and political science. Laura, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction and uh, also to Ron and Dan because they presented uh, quite well the, the EOSC environment and also the challenges we are working on in, in the shop context. And uh, now I would like to focus on one service uh, developed within, uh, within SHOC, the SSH uh, Open Marketplace. So in 10 minutes, uh, I would like to highlight the concept of the SSH Open Marketplace 
the timeline we have and, and what the alpha release we are doing today uh, means. I would also like to present the, um, quickly the content of the SSH open marketplace uh, because we would need more time to, to go into details, but we will also have the round table after. Um, I will come back on the sustainability model we are working on and um, I will try to explain how you can join us if you are interested by the, by the initiative. So the SSH Open Marketplace is a discovery portal for social sciences and, and humanities resources, such as tools, uh, services, data sets, research papers, training materials and, and workflows, and especially resources useful for the digital aspects of a researcher's work. Uh, it's not a repository where you can host your data. It's usually one of the first questions uh, we got uh, when, uh, when we present the, the marketplace. It can be considered as one of the access points for SSH resources in the, in the EOS context. It's not the only one. That's also why we are collaborating with the other similar initiatives in the EOS ecosystem and, and also beyond. And uh, finally, what we aim for is to build not just uh, another catalog and to not build just another catalog that's, um, we, we put at the core three, three concepts uh, for, the, for the SSH open marketplace and these three concepts are curation, contextualization and, and community. So what are we doing in, in terms of uh, curation? Uh, we automatically ingest uh, metadata collected from, uh, from various sources. An editorial team is uh, continuously or will be continuously uh, checking the relevance of the information. And the most important aspect is that we expect uh, contribution from the community. Uh, either by the creation of entries in the, in the marketplace or by the enrichment of, uh, of existing uh, entries. When it comes to the, to the contextualization, uh, what we are doing is that we are creating links uh, between items in the marketplace. So for example, if you have a tool, uh, we will link a training material that can be used to, to learn how to use this tool. Our uh, research paper could also be linked if it described the use of a tool within a, a specific project, for example. We are also uh, investigating other ways to um, promote this uh, contextualization aspects, um, and it will be developed uh, during the next, uh, in the next months of, of our work. And uh, when it comes to community inputs, we really think that it's a central part of, of uh, our work. So I would like to highlight two aspects. Uh, first, the development phase uh, we, we are now um, in, so we are working following an agile method and a user-centered design approach to really build the, the portal on, on user needs. And in that sense, also the expertise of uh, research infrastructures, partners of, of the shop project or existing networks such as uh, Liber for libraries, for example, are also key to, to ensure that we are working guided by existing research communities and active uh, networks. And beyond the, the um, development methods, uh, we are currently investigating wh what kind of community features we would like to implement to make the SSH uh, open marketplace um, a place where interactions will, will benefit to, to the content we have. And in that sense, the, the crowdsourcing uh, science uh, talk yesterday uh, at the SS, uh, ICT SSH conference was, uh, was kind of insp uh, inspiring because even if it's not the same, exactly the same purpose, we are sharing uh, uh, some concern that, that was raised yesterday as well. So what is the timeline for uh, all these ambitions? Uh, the shop project started in January 2019. In September last year, we, we published the system specification of the SSH uh, open marketplace in which you can find the user requirements process. Uh, you can also discover the data model um, and the system architecture of the portal. We are now in, in June, uh, so time for the alpha release of the portal and we have decided to make the SSH open marketplace available for testers. I will uh, come back in, uh, to this in, in a minute. In six months, at the end of the, of the year, we plan to, to go public for a beta release and then we will have one year to, to improve the, and release the final version of the, of the website. 
So what does it mean to, to make an alpha release uh, now? The alpha version of the SSH uh, open marketplace is accessible to testers. I just mentioned it. You can register uh, as a tester on the shock website. I also put here the, the short URL if you want to access it uh, right now and, and register as a tester. And um, today is our first event uh, with, with tester and, and you will meet our first four testers in, in a few minutes. We will also uh, launch a public consultation platform on the SHOCK website to collect uh, more basic um, or to collect feedback on, on more basic uh, features. And it, it will be available soon, probably during the summer. And um, we, are, uh, we will run a series of, of events addressing a specific community's needs during the, um, between the alpha and, and the beta release, so during the next uh, six months. And the first one uh, we are organizing is a DIA webinar this Friday. And I also put the link here if you want to, to register, so addressing the arts and, and humanities uh, community's need. So this is uh, what the SSH open marketplace uh, looks like. Um, this and the next two slides are a screenshot of the design mockups and not the website in itself, but it's, at the end it, it's the same. Um, at least it looks the same. So this is the home page with a search bar. Uh, you also have some browsing options that we are uh, now implementing on the, on the bottom of, of, this, um, of this first screen. This is what um, a search results page uh, looks like so quite a classical approach with the with the filters on, on the left where you can refine your search and an overview of your search results and this is what looks like an, an individual item so an individual tool for example with the metadata descriptors on on the right a description of, of the tool on the on the top and some illustrations and as well as an easy uh, go to go to the service button or go to the tool or go to the training material to make it clear that we are not hosting all the things we are presenting but we are pointing uh, out to to them so just a bit uh, more information on the content i told you already that we were um, aggregating metadata coming from different sources and during an initial uh, onboarding uh, phase, we ingested three major uh, digital humanities uh, sources. So TAPOR, which is a website collecting tools uh, used for text analysis, not, not only, but mainly. Uh, the SSK is a standardization survival kit developed in, a, in the Partners project that presents a collection of uh, research use case scenarios for digital humanities and heritage science and the beautiful programming historian, um, which publishes uh, tutorials to help humanists learn uh, digital techniques. So we are now entering in the extended population phase uh, during which we want to also re-equilibrate the discipline's coverage because as you can see, during the first phase, we, we focused more on, on DH resources and we would like now to, to include and to ingest more social sciences resources, for example. And in the meantime, uh, we will implement uh, some community features to allow contributions and, uh, and manual curation as soon as possible and, and for sure uh, by December for the, for the public release of the, of the marketplace. There is also a large part of, of our work uh, that is um, dedicated to the sustainability uh, of the SSH open marketplace. So we are working on a shared governance model and five uh, ERICs, uh, European Research Infrastructure Consortia, partners in, in the shock project agreed to, to contribute to the, um, to the shock marketplace sustainability for a first period of one year after the project, so until uh, May 2023. This is a good start and then we are now refining uh, what kind of uh, responsibility if each of these partners will have in, uh, in, in the future. And we also truly believe that the sustainability can only be successful if we think this portal as the, the collaborative results of uh, different research communities work. So the continuous curation is clearly a challenge, um, but we plan to build on existing networks and to also foster new ones. And I already mentioned that we were working on, on the proper community features to, to support uh, these uh, this efforts. 
So if I still have uh, two minutes, I'm not sure, but I would like to, to quickly present you the team behind the, the marketplace. So this is the list of uh, all the partners involved in the, in the work package in which we are creating the SSH open marketplace. And you can also see our first four testers that uh, uh, contribute to this, uh, to this creation. And if you want to, to join us, um, this is a different way you can, you can get involved. So starting now, you can become a tester. So I really, we really encourage you to, to register as a tester and to get involved in our next events. Um, you can provide your feedback on, on basic features, or at least you will be able to do it very soon uh, when the public consultation platform will be available on the shock website. Um, by December, you will be able to contribute directly to the SSH Open Marketplace content by creating or enriching um, uh, uh, the content. And uh, we don't have a specific date yet, but an editorial team will be created soon. And it's also another way uh, you could eventually get involved if, if you are interested in it. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation. It was very nice and very clear. Um, so any questions for Laura also please on the chat and uh, it will be taken to the discussion to the roundtable discussion for now uh, we uh, while uh, Mate is uh, preparing uh, the, the roundtable discussion we will uh, launch a, a poll um, Martina can I ask you okay so we have a few questions to understand who you are um, so you have to go to uh, www.menti.com and then on the top, you see the code that you have to enter, which is 791237. Um, and then there are a few questions, I, th I think there are five, uh, so that we can, that we, but also people on the, in the workshop can uh, have an idea where you're from and who you are. So what is your country of residence? Austria, South Africa, France, Sweden, the Netherlands, Finland, Spain, Germany, Belgium, Slovenia, Italy, Czechia, Belgium. Okay, a nice spread of people from, from Europe, but even beyond. Ah, and I see even in chat Saudi Arabia. A lot of people from the Netherlands, I see, uh, where the ICT SSH was originally going to take place. Nigeria in the chat. Okay. Turkey, I see. Nice. Okay. India, wow. Um, next question Which of the shock stakeholder categories? do you identify with? So are you a researcher, universities and academic institutions, research libraries and archives, research infrastructures or e-infrastructures, EOS thematic clusters? Are you from the private sector and industry players? Are you research funding from a research funding organization? Are you from a policy making organization? Uh, are you a citizen scientist? Or do you feel that you don't fit in any of these and want to say that you're other? So we see a lot of uh, universities and academic institutions. That's already 30%, 20% research libraries and archives, 24%, 16% researchers, and 18% research infrastructures. Oh, and we also have 2% research funding organizations. And there are more people adding to the chat, um, universities and academic re institutions. Okay. Okay, the main, uh, most of you are from, uh, from universities uh, and research institutions. We have four large groups, research libraries, researchers, research infrastructures, and the EOSC thematic clusters. Oh, every, every category is represented. That's very nice to see. Okay, so the next question. Please indicate your research domain or area of data management expertise. Economics, heritage science, cultural heritage, fair, 
history. Management, communications, theater studies, literature studies, human science, open access, metadata, digital platform development, civilization, social sciences, library science, cultural heritage, research data management. Well, we have a lot of different, we have a very nice spread of, of, uh, of domains and data management expertise. So can I ask you to move to the next question, Martina? It's very interesting to see this. Have you heard about shock? Uh, have you heard about the shock project and the SSH open marketplace before? So that's a little bit more people say yes, but so we still have some, uh, some dissemination and raising awareness to do. So we're very happy that you joined us today. So the next question, I don't know if there's a next question, Martina. Where were you involved in previous shock activities, workshop, webinar, etc. cetera? So. So see most of you say no. So this is a very nice to have you here then. Um, so now we move to the, uh, to the discussion, the round table. Matej, while you're uh, starting to, uh, to prepare, I'll quickly present you. Um, so Matej Durko is head of the uh, ACDCH Technical Working Group Tools, Services and Systems and was one of the key figures in founding the Institute. So since 2002, he has been a team member of the Austrian uh, cultural, uh, of the ACDH institutional predecessors, the Austrian Academy Corpus AAC and the Institute for Corpus Linguistics and Text Technology. Uh, engaging primarily in corpus linguistics and development of text technological applications. And since 2009, he has been part of the Austrian Research Infrastructure Core Group, contributing to the development of key technical components, such as the component metadata infrastructure, the federated content search, and the vocabulary repository, both on the local and the European levels. So currently, he acts as the coordinator of the metadata creation task force in Clarion, and is co-head of the Virtual Competence Center uh, e infrastructure in Daria. So, Matei, the floor is yours. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so now we come to the, well, let's say main part or the uh, time, time wise, definitely the main part of the, uh, of the workshop. Um, thank you for the previous speakers for so wonderfully preparing the ground, I would say. Uh, I, uh, it almost seem, seems like we are orchestrated. Um, they, so I think this, the scope and the context is, is uh, sh should be clear now. Um, maybe one remark on, on this setup that we have with this roundtable and the testers. So we were contemplating how to go about this, um, this alpha release, which we did, promised in, in the project proposal. Uh, Why kind of having a, finding a balance between um, getting as much feedback as possible and sh start showing uh, the application to the world. Uh, but still we are aware that there are many loose ends and, uh, and bugs and, and so on. So uh, just put it out widely would be, uh, would we thought pro provoke a lot of noise and a lot of kind of people pointing out things that we are aware of anyhow. So we rather decided to uh, kind of, yeah, to find uh, volunteers who would uh, rather want to go deeper into, uh, look deeper into the, uh, into what is currently there um, um, and give us kind of informed feedback. So they would have, and uh, the con specifically the setup was that uh, out of a uh, number of uh, people, persons who uh, were invited, uh, we picked four uh, persons for testing, they one uh, week ago they got a 
access to the current version of the latest version of the of the application and one week to to evaluate it and look at it um, and give us feedback uh, still before uh, this meeting so they are kind of now the the speakers of the of the public or the, of the users if you wish so uh, so they represent you and and all the others who at some point of uh, soon will be able to or well in december the latest will be able to uh, look at the uh, well use the application um, yeah okay so with this um, and yes i should add or have to add this uh, we are really very uh, happy to, and, and glad to see that for us it seemed uh, we would say it worked out very well so what the feedback we got from the from our four colleagues was was already very valuable and, and insightful and we felt like okay we have now enough new material or feedback to to continue working um, so here again a big thank you to to the four of you and now i come back I come come finally to rep, uh, to introduce you uh, so it's um, Agnieszka Szulinska from the Institute of Literary Research of the Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, her research uh, interests include uh, TEI, digital edition, scholarly communication, open access, fair data, uh, so digital humanities uh, researcher. Um, Kasia Karpinska from Erasmus University of Rotterdam. Um, also part of the open data infrastructure for social sciences and economic innovation uh, also a researcher but in the area of soci sociology uh, research interests labor market um, migration family relations social policy um, maurizio toscano from the university of granada uh, a digital humanities researcher uh, with, with which uh, his interests uh, include digital public history data modeling uh, web information system and GIS, and as I understand, he uh, works on this on the on the edge or on the um, uh, well, in, in co collaborates with uh, researchers in different uh, uh, humanities researchers in various departments, implementing the DH methods. So, exactly on this uh, where where digital and humanities meet uh, sounds to me. So I can relay very much to that. Uh, and Vanessa Hanneschläger, full disclosure, a colleague of mine, but uh, I wasn't aware that she is uh, 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 volunteering for, for the testing. Uh, so she is also from Austrian Center for Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage of the Austrian Academy of Sciences in Vienna. Uh, background German literature studies, uh, <laughs> uh, specializing in Austrian Nobel laureates. Uh, and uh, but but again here the combination of uh, of digital or, or inclination towards digital humanities, uh, working a lot in, in research infrastructures, uh, Daria, uh, and uh, focus on open science. Okay, so thank you, the four of you. Uh, so and now the setup is that uh, we kind of put up three areas uh, of. Of questions uh, or topics uh, to the uh, to the testers, uh, or three aspects they should look at separately when they will be uh, evaluating the application. Uh, and now we will go through these three topics, each uh, of the testers sharing their insights briefly. Uh, then we will try to maybe answer some of the issues, and then we would open up the floor to to the to the to the audience uh, to also post questions and hoping for a discussion. So we uh, expect like around 20 minutes per one for each of these three blocks. Um, so we start with uh, uh, user interface design and navigation and the search experience. And I would give floor to Agnieszka uh, to uh, comment on this. Thank you, Matej, for introducing me and for the chance to test the open marketplace. Uh, can you hear me? It's yes. okay? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, I tested the marketplace on uh, two uh, web browsers, Safari and Chrome, uh, and I tried to open it on my iPhone, but I noticed that the responsive ver uh, version wasn't added to alpha, so I didn't test it, it uh, and I won't mention it further. Uh, so this uh, this category uh, UX design navigation it's, uh, and search experience 
is my favorite and I definitely feel most competent in testing this part. Uh, as you can see, my remarks uh, refer largely to CSS layer of the website, Cascading uh, Style Sheet. Uh, it points out that the site in general works well. I didn't encounter any major problems with navigation. Uh, uh, breadcrumb is very, very nice. I, I love this part of navigation. Uh, a big plus for adding contrast which was added in, in mockups from uh, Adobe XD, which was also uh, shared with us. Uh, what, uh, what I would change eventually is, is the icons because the diversity between them is, is too, too small for me at the moment. And my, my, <laughs> my hobby part like fonts because currently uh, there are Ubuntu and Open Sans, and they are also too similar to me to be a pair on the website. I mean, Open Sans in uh, in main text is all right, but from the from the head headlines maybe maybe something different. And I think that that's uh, that's the main part. Uh, on the <laughs> next slide, I don't. I'm not sure if the no. The next slide is already. I think uh, Cassia. So thank you for okay. for this. Yeah. Okay. Thank no you. Problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cassia. Hello. Can I start? Yeah. We can hear you. Okay. Hello. Uh, well, thank you uh, for having me here as as one of the uh, of the tester of the uh, uh, open marketplace. I really enjoyed doing this. It's a new experience uh, for me. Uh, so I looked. Uh, oh. Now there is also a video. Uh, I looked uh, at, the, uh, at the marketplace from perspective of uh, a social science researcher. That's, uh, that's my background. Uh, so with this perspective uh, in mind, I think there are some uh, general remarks uh, on my side because uh, this part of the uh, marketplace is not yet as developed as the uh, digital human humanities uh, part. But my general impression was that uh, I really enjoyed uh, uh, browsing through the, through the website. It's, it's very clean, it's very uh, user-friendly, uh, so there's enough information there, but it's not overload of, uh, of information uh, at this point. Uh, the main categories that you specified are well-defined, they're very distinct and, and informative, uh, so that's kind of also um, makes it easier for, uh, for, for user to kind of navigate uh, through, through them. Uh, what I was uh, when I was going through, through the website, a few of the uh, aspects that kind of got my attention was uh, uh, the fact that uh, it's not yet uh, populated as, as you intend eventually. Uh, and I was wondering how this whole functionality will work when there was much more content uh, within, the, uh, within the website. And then my uh, concern was, for instance, uh, uh, aspects related to keywords. There are quite some keywords already right now. And I think with more content uh, uh, being ingested, this number will even increase, uh, which eventually could lead to uh, some difficulties in really browsing through, through this. So that's uh, probably one of the issues that, that you would have to uh, look uh, into uh, more closely. Uh, the same will probably apply uh, later to a category activities, uh, which also I didn't find a really good uh, label. And I was really trying to figure out what the other label could be, uh, still debating with myself. So maybe I will have this brilliant idea in the future, but uh, as it stands now, it's uh, kind of, I don't, I don't think it covers the whole uh, uh, idea of, of what or your aspect that you're uh, presenting there. Uh, and for me, I wasn't entirely clear whether you allow or not uh, use of operator in search engine. And I think for now it's probably less of an issue, but in the moment that you will have more information uh, and more uh, items uh, uh, included in the marketplace, it could be helpful in kind of like uh, limiting a little bit of the, uh, the scope of, of the results the, uh, the, the engine will return. That will be general idea from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Maurizio. Hello, good morning. Uh, Thank you uh, for the organizer to to pick my uh, to pick me as one of the tester. Um, I've been uh, other times on on the other side, like uh, uh, building a, a web infrastructure for uh, for research. So it's uh, it's nice to be on on this side uh, this time. Um, so instead of focusing because time is limited, well, uh, instead of focusing on what I liked, probably it's better to to uh, to discuss a bit what I missed. 
there are a mix of uh, uh, front end and um, back end suggestions. Uh, something that can be useful but is not crucial uh, is uh, search box live suggestions, uh, like something that uh, autocomplete in terms of uh, something that can help as someone that doesn't have really a clear idea of what he's looking for, uh, starting a search and then having a, a matching words to that uh, um, uh, yeah. to the words that he already included. Mm -hmm. uh, some mm, as that as do some uh, as, uh, something that can be uh, added to the front end, like the fixed menu. When you scroll down, it doesn't uh, uh, the main menu uh, doesn't stay on top, uh, or even a, a back to the top uh, uh, link when you have long pages. Mm -hmm. And um, the image actually at the background is very nice, but uh, probably. Uh, I would like to have more, uh, more diversity in uh, in it, in terms of, uh, for example, uh, it's very urban focused, uh, or it doesn't have East European uh, mm. landmarks or uh, mm. stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and the fonts is very small, but and something that probably can be uh, useful for a uh, for first time user is uh, an intro tour, uh, mm. what is normally called intro JS uh, uh, tours, that mm. especially to offer an alternative to free search because uh, I like the unified uh, uh, simple search box because we are used to it, but mm -hmm. can be also uh, quite intimidating if you are not, uh, if, you, if you don't have an exact idea of what you're looking for or yeah. why you are there. So an intro to an intro to that can even suggest alternatives, mm -hmm. for example, to browse the content is mm -hmm. uh, fine. Yeah, you can go to the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Can I? I would like to so pick pick the main thing. So yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, for example, I would like uh, to have some kind of personal of personalization. Uh, some kind of personalization, a personalized mm -hmm. experience. For, for example, for registered e users to offer something more. For example, the possibility to bookmark uh, to bookmark resources or to mm. save a search, or for example, the possibility to report an issue should be open to everybody. But yeah. registered users can have uh, their reported issues saved uh, on their profile. Mm. And, um, mm, and also sense. something that, and something that uh, uh, I liked was, uh, for example, the last added uh, section that can mm -hmm. be useful later on at mm -hmm. the beginning uh, is not very because obviously you are adding a new content, uh, a lot of content in bulk at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So having uh, something that is more related with the curation of the website, like recommended uh, uh, tools or editor picks for trainings can help uh, at the beginning. Okay, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, last uh, tester to Vanessa. Hi, thank you. And uh, thank you for having me and sorry for the surprise to Matei. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, it was, uh, uh, I think, uh, on the plus side, uh, what I really liked about the marketplace is you go there and you immediately sort of, you get an idea of what this is and what you can do here. So it's, I think, I, so I agree with also what Cassia said that um, I like the uncluttered-ness of the, of the start page. And um, you sort of, you can immediately jump in. Also, you didn't um, crowd the start page with a lot of text that no one would read anyway. So I think that's that's actually smart. Though uh, when we get to to the um, sort of the, the governance questions later on, um, I would sort of um, uh, take back this point. But for the start page, I think it's it's a good thing to to um, reduce the text as 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 good as you can. Um, I also found that it's uh, very intuitive to use, although I did have uh, sort of the same issue with the search bar. It's, um, well, intimidating is maybe not the word that I would use, but I really didn't know what to put in there. So can I put my Nobel laureates names in there and will I get something? No. I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Also, I agree uh, with the, the, the issue that there are too many keywords for uh, also the relatively small number of resources that you have in there uh, for now. Also, uh, while I do like the uncluttered of the start page, I think that the filter options um, should maybe be made available even sooner because I think they can be very helpful also to 
uh, to understand how what what kind of stuff you can find in there. So sort of this would solve the problem with the with the um, with the problem with the search bar where you don't really know what to put in. And I also agree with the point about the last edit. Um, I think uh, this might be useful for frequent fu future frequent users of the marketplace, but for a first time user, which you will also, I guess, have a lot of times, um, this doesn't help me at all because I don't, as a first time user of the marketplace, I don't really care uh, what was added when I care if something is relevant to what I'm looking for. So I would um, maybe consider taking this off the start page because I'm not sure if, if you really need to have it there. So that would be my first round of input. Thank you very much. Thank you. So before we go to the next uh, um, kind of topic, uh, I would like to uh, take advantage of being the speaker and, and uh, reply to uh, some of the points you raised and please other speakers uh, also jump in and then we will also open the floor to to the audience uh, for for more questions but i would like to so yes i very much again thank you and all very valid points especially also regarding the the layout and we are aware of some of it but it's it's good to have this confirmation and and this uh, kind of neutral view because we are a bit blind already uh, I would like to focus on the search thing because I think that's kind of at the core of the or search aspect uh, that is at the core of, of the of a discovery platform basically clearly um, and and no question uh, auto suggestion for the free text search uh, will has to be available and will be available that it's subject to discussion what would be the kind of keywords would uh, that would be used there but but that has to be there um, uh, regarding the operators, uh, kind of kind of more complex queries, uh, we I guess so. It's def technically not an issue. It can be easily done. My experience is that nobody goes for those, or or they, there is very little use for that. Um, uh, kind of for this kind of advanced search. Nevertheless, we can offer it. Uh, but we actually hoped that, or or our where, where we try to kind of focus mainly is this faceted search, which is I would say a a uh, nice uh, middle ground and, and for intuitively drilling down uh, through a data space, even if it gets bigger. Uh, so you don't have to know what you have to search for because you see the values that are there. You also see how, how discriminative they are and how many uh, results we would get if you click on each of those or kind of drill down that path. Um, and, and actually, I was surprised because those these facets we already have on the front page so be, below the main search bar uh, we list the main keywords and the main kind of main values for for some of the facets so basically through one click you already get there so you don't have to think or, or find, think of terms that you would need to put in but you can only you already see what is what is there what categories are there uh, but maybe we need to make it more more prominent um, yes, and regarding the um, keywords and uh, well, maybe one point more on the activities. Um, uh, yes, we had a lot of discussion about this uh, about this uh, term, and there was all kinds of workflows and uh, scenarios. There are many names uh, to this thing we are doing. The idea is that we are describing or we are offering tools and solutions for for research activity in the end. So, so the idea is that the researcher is doing their task and wants to be supported or wants to find a way how to how to do it how to do it um, and and kind of this idea of research activities there are taxonomies for that you can also think of, of uh, uh, scholarly primitives uh, or also what Ron said this whole life cycle uh, research life cycle can be considered as a sequence of activities and and activities is meant here as activity types basically so am I recording am I capturing and I'm analyzing and I'm conceiving uh, or and so on so this is not kind of this is sourced from from a broader context uh, but we are happy if you come with a congenial um, new name then yes please okay and now i would stop here and ask to the audience to um or let's see if the audience is also would like to uh actively contribute 
There is one question in the Q and A uh, box. So one suggestion yes. from uh, Saidur Rahman. One suggestion is the website have facilities for handicap or specially able person who want to use it. Uh, so, yeah. I know that yes. our mm -hmm. designers, yes, they worked on, on some uh, contrasted um, design and they, it's already implemented. I'm not sure if it's already implemented, but uh, for sure, yes, there yeah. will be some, some facilities. It's foreseen, mm -hmm. yes. And the web accessibility guidelines, we certainly want to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll implement. I see a raised hand by Sabina. Uh, Ned, Ned by, oh, my, my Cyrillic is very bad. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, sorry. Sabina, do you want to, well, sorry, I need to unmute you first. Yeah, oh, doesn't work. Now uh, she should be okay. able to speak. Can you see her? Uh, unmute it. Nope. No. Okay. Uh, maybe you can put a question in the chat, Sabina, if you, I'm not sure what is the problem. Oh yeah, now. Sabina, you should be unmuted. Can you, do you want to say something? No, I simply uh, wanted to uh, express my uh, gratitude because your topic is rather interesting and impressing. I, I didn't want to add something. <laughs> ah, the okay, organizer good. <laughs> to okay. switch on the microphone. I don't know why. Okay, well then, all the better. Um, Matei, there is one question uh, in, in the, the yeah. in the Q and A, and it says. Okay, but it it's was, already answered. It's answered yet, but maybe. You which one was to, it? Uh, so oh yes, the Steiter from. Is Sorry? it possible? Monica Kostaite, Kostaite. If it will be possible to access without yeah. additional account. Yeah, exactly. So it will, yes, it, the application will be available freely for anonymous users. Uh, currently it's still restricted to the testers, but as a te even as a tester, you don't have to have an institutional account. You just need to apply as a testers and you will uh, grant it access. Uh, but as, as Maurizio also pointed out, uh, we want to take advantage of the uh, single sign-on and, and uh, kind of a federa identity federation so that if you, so can you very easily, basically seamlessly be logged in into the marketplace and when you logged in, you have additional uh, features available. So especially if you will, wouldn't want to contribute actively. Uh, uh, so so as, a, as a contributor or add suggestions and so on, then you need to log in. Um, and also when you log in, you, have, you will have personalization uh, features like uh, stored search or, or bookmarks. Um, so these are things we are considering, yes. Okay, any more? Oh, one more open question, thank you, okay. So I would say let's move on. We have enough ahead now we switch the ordering now Vanessa is first and the topic is the content itself uh, and the curation of the quality of the content so to say and the curation of the content okay thank you um, so I tried to you know um, to answer this question with with very uh, fresh eyes and I uh, would like to start with the positives so I think that it's uh, actually a very good thing that the descriptions on the landing pages are very brief and um, they don't spam you with too much information. And I think uh, the intention that you explained earlier with the button that leads you to the actual resource, um, that works very well because this button is very prominent and I don't really need to you know, read about the resource, I can just go there and, and see, look at it for, my, for itself. So I think that's a, um, that's a smart idea to do. Um, on the, I think the, the, uh, the minuses that I added here, so the, the issue with the images that is, you know, um, I guess you have that um, on your radar. So um, I don't need to see a logo yeah. this size, yeah. Yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, one maybe more fundamental issue uh, or also an open question I would have um, what your intentions there would be. Um, currently you have uh, German resources in there as well and um, it makes sense that the description is in German seeing as the resource itself is German 
text data, so um, the DTA, mm -hmm. uh, German mm -hmm. Text Archive. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it doesn't really, if I don't know any German, I can't use the resource anyway. So the question is, would there be a point in translating it? But that was an open question I had seen as, now I do understand German, but if it was Russian and in Cyrillic, I wouldn't really be able to, to know what I'm looking at. So, um, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, next would be, where are we? Here we are. No, here we are. Come on. So, okay. Maurizio. Unable to start. Here I am. Yeah. Can you hear yes. me? Yeah. I'm unable to start video. I don't know why, but it's fine. So, um, okay. Uh, so focusing on the, the content. So the, the single page of each resource, uh, on the sidebar, there is some, um, redundant element but uh, uh, I focus more on what I missed and I think tags that are very important there uh, for the metadata can be links for example to provide uh, online uh, live uh, uh, search filters mm -hmm. um, something that I think is very important and I presume is planned but uh, it's not there anyway at the moment is uh, especially for tools is the uh, is the license type they have if they are free software is it is open source software paid commercial uh obviously commercial software i think uh, uh, it's valuable and should be there uh mm -hmm. but um, there should be some way to dis to clearly distinguish what kind of uh, uh business model the tool uh, has behind uh difficulty level also can be used for for uh, as an additional metadata for for especially for tools and training and uh, and something also that uh, um, it's important, especially for tools, is the I think the latest release data, um, date because there are a mm -hmm. lot of uh, useful tools that uh, has been abandoned or have not been uh, uh, updated recently. And we know even if uh, they were very good and they are still very very good, compatibility is a main, it's a it's a huge issue with the mm -hmm. tools because then if it is. Uh, no, it's fine. Um, so definitely, that can uh, it can be a more advanced uh, uh, information, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, many people will uh, will find it useful to distinguish uh, uh, updated uh, supported content to to not supported. Mm -hmm. uh, and then related to uh, well, for the related items at the bottom, I will really like to see uh, a strong related content, not the content that's it, that 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 is somehow related. Uh, with what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. with what I'm looking on the main page. But for example, uh, if I'm looking for a specific tool, I want to see just uh, uh, the training material uh, of the tool that I'm viewing, uh, the tools that are uh, alternatives of what I'm uh, viewing. Alternatives are very important for recreation because I can have a paid software that has very good uh, free alternatives and I want to know them, or uh, they have a larger user base and, and also data sets that uh, are uh, suited to be manipulated with uh, with those. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we have another slide. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I think. Uh, and. Um, Sorry, I'm just. Yeah. Okay, go on. It's fine. Um, well, coming back to the um, outdated content that uh, can happen. So uh, it can be there because it can still be useful, but probably there can be some way, it can be useful to have some way to, fil to filter Definitely. out. Yes. And uh, especially not promoting too much um, content that has, hasn't been updated for uh, for yep. years. And uh, one suggestion that come back to the personalized experience I was speaking before is, for example, on account creation or basically on the kind of the of the level you are as a researcher in terms of technical experience. You can filter out. You, you can add the experimental or outdated software to the searches to the search results. Uh, or not, or, mm -hmm. or, or you can avoid them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, a more general suggestion, I know it can be difficult, but uh, the idea, uh, to come back to the idea of not being just another catalog, uh, something that probably is not on the market already uh, for this kind of resources is being a recommender system. So uh, back to the personalized experience, for example, on account creation, I can choose what kind of uh, uh, digital uh, humanity research I am and what kind of interest I am, what kind of tools I already know and what kind of tools I don't know. 
and uh, based on that you can create a personalized uh, experience suggesting uh, content mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a bit like the experience you have on Netflix or, or stuff like that I mean when you when you first created what kind of gender you like what kind of uh, uh, movie you already uh, seen and uh, so I can understand yeah, I, can, I, I, I can make a profile of you and uh, actively proactively suggesting content yeah mm -hmm. great thank you mm -hmm. wonderful uh, next would be Katia uh, yes uh, okay. Uh, as I said before, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the marketplace from perspective of, uh, uh, of social uh, uh, researchers, social scientists. Uh, and uh, in this capacity, it was kind of hard to uh, look at the tool because the content for this uh, particular domain is, is, is pretty empty still. Uh, there's only one uh, data set that is, uh, uh, that is included. Uh, so I took a bit of uh, the liberty of, of looking a bit more uh, general, uh, take a bit more general uh, view on uh, what the possibilities and uh, and I'm going to play a bit of uh, uh, devil's advocate here, actually. Uh, <laughs> so uh, what I saw is that you point in the uh, direction of uh, uh, of the uh, meta, meta, metadata of uh, uh, of the data set that, that you included in the website, but there's no access to information of how, what kind of variables are included in the data. It's only the general metadata that is uh, provided. And I think for a researcher, it would be nice to have a bit of a glimpse of what's, what's in the data before you start the whole uh, application process to get uh, access to uh, the data. And I know that this is, this is very complex and it's definitely in a category great to have. Uh, I don't know if it's feasible uh, to, to execute within, uh, within the marketplace, but that's kind of like one of the ideas I had when I looked at it. Mm. And, and then the second part, you know, like playing of this uh, devil's advocate is uh, if, if you point me in direction of the data set, uh, what, what's the difference? How, how you're unique in comparison to other search engines uh, out there? So uh, for instance, a Google data search would generally will uh, give me similar uh, functionality. So that's something I think you maybe can, can reflect on uh, uh, in a minute mm -hmm. and kind of maybe st strengthen this idea also in a, uh, in a marketplace uh, in the end. And then uh, I, I know that uh, I, I read on your website that you're working on the ingestions of the data from a SESTA data catalog. So that's kind of one of the next steps that uh, uh, in, in your uh, development of the, uh, uh, of the platform. Uh, it's a pretty large database. So I was wondering how this will work uh, on the one hand, uh, technically, I mean, like you will, you will ingest a lot of a lot of uh, information. Uh, so will the the, the 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 whole system kind of uh, uh, cope with uh, with this? Uh, and then, even more important question is the the current search functionality sufficient to go through uh, all the information that is included in a SESTA data catalog? How you will go through all the uh, data sets to make sure that you uh, have access to information that you, you require. So probably you would have to add some more uh, filters uh, along the way, like country where the, con the data comes from, uh, or uh, type of data, type of access, et cetera. These are the general ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have still a minute or? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so then this is the, the main part I looked at uh, based on my uh, uh, expertise and experience. Uh, and then there's other aspects, uh, so workflows, for instance, uh, other aspects that you, uh, including the web, on the website, workflows, social scientists not really work with, uh, with these tools, so it's difficult to say anything about it. But for tools and, and training materials, I think it's a very nice overview for especially new users to kind of navigate what is out there, what's, uh, what's available, to kind of explore new possibilities. Uh, and, but here it's also uh, some of the information as it, for instance, uh, uh, access to statistical software. Uh, it's not something that you would need marketplace to find. Basically researchers, social scientists, they, they know this, this software. They also know where to find some of the information on uh, running additional packages, etc. So here again, uh, this, this devil's advocate uh, coming in, uh, what's the added value here? And a bit more of the general uh, uh, question I had, and I think you have to be very explicit about it at one point, once, once you, uh, your, your task is here completed, how are the contextual links created? Uh, so I think it kind of uh, links also a little bit to what Maurizio said. Some of the links are, uh, seems a bit superficial, and there are too many of them, but mm. also what are the criteria? How, how you make, uh, make the links, uh, uh, contextual links uh, work? Uh, for now, I think it's, you have enough information to kind of make those links, but the moment you expand and ingest more information, 
I think it's an important for, uh, for, for the users to know where those links come from because they will kind of steer you a little bit in particular direction. Mm -hmm. And also you run a risk of having too many cross links that are maybe less informative. So I think in the end, I would like to uh, know as a user, what are the criteria, how you, those being created and uh, mm -hmm. how they are coming about. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and next, Agnieszka. Uh, thank you. I think that host uh, uh, stopped my uh, video, so I can't <laughs> uh, okay. start video now. But Can the ghost dragon look at it? <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's okay if I'm if I, if uh, you can hear me. Yep. Uh, okay, so as you see, I was um, just a second. Okay, uh, uh, so for this for this category, uh, I was uh, looking mainly uh, to to the TI standard uh, content. And, oh, that's nice. <laughs> thank you. And uh, one thing I think, it, one thing is especially important for me, I would like to see examples of use of a particular tool. I think this would be just a five star function for, um, for example, if you've got the Oxygen TI editor, you could uh, put a project, uh, pro digital humanities project, uh, which uh, they are using that oxygen editor, and that it would, would it would be really great. Uh, uh, I'll also, I would uh, like to see more extensive, extended maybe descriptions from the open market creators, uh, because now it's the, the descriptions are, uh, let's say, too short for me. It, it's fine because uh, it gives me the basic info about about a particular item or tool or something like that. But it's, uh, I think it could be uh, much more detail, detailed. And, and uh, I'm also not sure about the function related to the selected tool because when I was again on the oxygen uh, item um, page, it, uh, it gives me the results to related uh, items only using TI, other TI. Uh, and I'm not sure this is a really strong connection. Mm -hmm. But I think this will uh, work better if you just uh, with more content to be to be honest, yeah, because now in the alpha version wasn't wasn't fully of uh, mm -hmm. or plenty of projects, mm -hmm. but it's okay mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and I'm not sure about the workflows module, I mean it's fine, but for me, as a um, literary researcher, <laughs> it's very similar to the training materials to some point. So, so some uh, with some cases it might be a little, you know, confusing. It is if I should go to the training materials for that or for the workflow. But in in general, it's okay. But I'm not sure if there will be plenty of uh, cases to add. Mm -hmm. And uh, about the multilingualism, I think it would be great if uh, the description will be not only in English, but also in the, for example, mother tongue of the project. For example, in English and Polish, in English and German, if the project came from the Germany, you know, yeah. and, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and it would be just, just great about okay. it. And mm -hmm. I think this is the... And I have, I have one more slide from you and I just wanted to, I'm not sure what the arrows oh, okay. mean there. So maybe you can uh, comment on that. Because the last added uh, functionality, I think it's, it, it would be, if updated reg regularly on regular basis, it would be great. Uh, I think it would be more highlighted to just switch these two columns if the last uh -huh, added okay. would, be, would be updated regularly. Because for me, it's even more important than, than the browsing options. But mm -hmm. of course, it, it could be... Uh, mm, it could yeah, be done in, in discussion. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not uh, super convinced about that because okay. I know li like last added be and the, the last news is from uh, two months ago, it, it would be not working. When it's, yeah, that's the, so, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're, they're the, I, we already see between the testers there, the opinions differ. Uh, and the, in, you can imagine in our team as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And we know that the, the uh, so I kind of you know, go flu fluently into, into trying to respond to some of the points you raised. And there are too many which I would like to comment on. Uh, so, but let's, let's pick a few. Uh, yeah, so the last edit is uh, that can, uh, it can have a fate of, of being too old. So, but here you actually, sorry, 
here we actually already see that this is on the front page, on the lower part of the front page are these, these facets. So that would be the, the quickest way to start navigating the content uh, by disciplines, by topics, by, by activities. So by the various categories. Okay, that, that, that's just uh, actually side note. Um, whew, where to start? Uh, so I think the one, yeah, because one of the kind of the three C's, the contextualization, uh, that is kind of should be implemented or should materialize itself through these links, the relations between items. And uh, you, uh, I, I'm glad to see confirm that, that our kind of difficulties to come to the, so, or put it the other way, Yes, we spent quite some time already, and we probably will still spend quite some time on on finding fine tuning this because on the one hand, exactly on this kind of trade off between uh, contextualize should help you give more kind of information and navigate through the space and find the related things um, but uh, too much will be a deluge and then you will all get lost in a in a uh, sea of of links when everything is connected and and then you, it not, has no discriminative power, so to say. Um, so um, uh, exactly what, what Maurizio said that uh, I would like to see the, the training materials to a tool or seeing an alternatives to a tool, uh, that would be exactly the kind of thing that we want to, to work on. And, and, and the question by I think Asia is how, how are these uh, links created? Um, Various ways. So we also think of some kind of half automatic uh, approaches of trying to match names against, for example, publications, or um, to find matching publications to a to a tool, for example. But obviously, that would give us again just a lot of automatic rubbish. So so the core here is indeed the curation and manually looking into do this um, do this link make sense um, so that would be part of the of the moderation team uh, part of the work of the moderation team and would also uh, and but the criteria are still to be worked out but exact the criteria would be how relevant is this so not just all the hundred papers that where something was used but so you could select and that you could also add some metrics like the uh, uh, citations but in the end uh, probably the human kind of intellectual input will, will be most useful there. Uh, one note here maybe on Maurizio's point that you would want to see the data sets that you uh, can use with a tool. Uh, I see a problem there exactly from what Cassia said when we will have a, when we would have a lot of normally there are millions or thousands or many data sets that you can uh, use a tool with. Uh, uh, or apply a tool on. So, so I think this direction doesn't really uh, work well, but maybe the other way around. So if I have a, a data set, uh, then to find the tools that I could you apply on that data set, that would be a direction which we are thinking of. And here also a, a side note to, or a pointer to the so-called switchboard, which is another uh, piece of uh, a component of the infrastructure we are working on in shock. That is exactly meant for that. So if I have data sets, what are the services I could apply on that based on some criteria? So, and then we are working on connecting marketplace and switchboard. Uh, bringing me to the problem of the data sets or problem, well, the situation around data sets. Um, uh, this is, again, you, well, you hit the nail uh, on the head or you, know, you, that you, you exactly the point. So it is, there are many catalogs, there are thousands and millions of, of data sets available. Uh, so uh, do we want to, we ask ourselves, do we want to kind of replicate all this information? And there are many data sets in SESTA data catalog, but there are even much more in Clarin, for example, VLO metadata catalog. Uh, and uh, currently, so we still need to see, but actually the main idea is we don't want to, we want to focus on the thing on, on the aspect of how. Uh, so, so that would be the tools and the, the training materials and the workflows that and services that kind of how can I do something. Uh, and uh, so, or put the other way, we probably won't have whole, all the data sets. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I can say it's, it's for sure, but, but currently we don't uh, plan to have all of the CESTA data catalog or other data catalogs, kind of all the items that are there uh, ingested into the, uh, into the marketplace. 
but rather probably a selection that would be kind of, again, manually selected those and then interlinked with, for example, a tool so that you would see, okay, exemplary data set that I can use uh, with a given tool. Or uh, if I have a training material, then the tool that the data sets that are mentioned in the training material uh, would be also linked and, and described. Uh, so kind of as a, if you wish, a handpicked uh, 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 from, from of data sets. Um, and regarding the workflows, um, um, I'm not sure if we can, the idea of workflow, we also, that is, is, is something like, uh, we also were looking for the right name there and you could call it also scenarios or, um, or solutions or basically, but basically it's a, again, a more strong of this how to, or tutorials, how to do something in a sequence of steps that describes you a prescription of how you can do arrive at a goal if you have a task. Um, um, and so, yes, there is natural similarity to training materials and kind of the, the, the line there is uh, distinction, there is fuzzy. Um, so we will need to see also how it will be uh, adopted by the users and, and how well we can um, present it. Uh, but kind of to stress the, the idea of this trying to answer how uh, that brought us to uh, raise or bring up the workflows as a separate a separate type of entity that will be presented there. Um, and last thing, I'm speaking, talking too much, but you gave me so much uh, interesting food for thought. The last thing is the multilinguality. Um, um, again, a, a topic of, of, of long discussions. Obviously, it would be wonderful to have everything in all languages, but uh, the curation effort is, is uh, unsurmountable, basically. So maybe yes, English and the native, but then again, you have the problem of the search. So if just parts of the content are in uh, in German, then you, uh, or in other language, then, uh, and you will, you, you expect that you have in multilinguality, you can search in your native language, then you will get a very small portion of the data that is actually there. So you will match on very small sets. So, so there are uh, quite some issues with the multilinguality as well. And we did not come to a final, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, Laura, <laughs> if we have a final decision. Uh, but we kind of don't dare to at attack it at the moment because it's, it feels uh, too much of a task, too big of a task. Um, yeah, okay, I stop here. Uh, we are, I'm afraid we are a bit out of time, but still, if there are one or two questions. There was one question in, in the Q&A uh, box from Jaya uh, Shrichet. Uh, Sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. Um, why is it so complex? So I think your <laughs> ans you answered kind of uh, extensively to, to this, but... Um, uh, the Jaya world is complex. <laughs> would you like to, to maybe precise your, your question or uh, uh, Matei's answer is, uh, is enough? Complex enough. You can unmute yourself if you would yeah. like. No, yes. Okay. Still, I find it, I am better than others when I compare myself uh, with my colleagues, but it, it looks so tough for me, complex for me, it's tedious for me. I don't know why and how. But what do you mean? Do you mean the marketplace? Yeah, because so many elements, at least the f first page, the title page can be so simple. I don't know where is what. I I'm good at, I have uh, published three papers. I'm not a novice. Even then it looks so um, complex. Yeah. For me. yeah, and that there we try to do a lot to, to reduce the complexity of the world we are trying to model. So uh, yes, uh, but okay, thank you. We will try to work on the on the clarity and, and simplicity. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. Shall we move on? I'm thinking we are a bit of running out of time. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so that will be the third part: curation, trust, and governance. Uh, Agnieszka. Okay. Thank you. Mm, the last observation is the section of curation, trust, and governance. Uh, particularly very important in relation to our digital world. Uh, 
I wonder why I couldn't find any info about authors or participants of the SSH uh, open marketplace. Mm. Mm, the contact uh, was uh, blank. Of course, I'm talking about the website because I, yeah. <laughs> I have a contact to you via email or other. Yeah. Good point, I'm talking yeah. about the website. Mm. Uh, I really uh, like the, the pillars uh, of the project curation community and con contextualization. It's very catchy and tempting. And apart from that, I think very, very real. Uh, although I, I'm, I really look forward to test more uh, community features, mm. uh, which wasn't fully uh, available to us in alpha version. Yeah. But, it's, but I, I see this is more complex and needs more work at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, privacy policy just seems <laughs> all right to me. I like being plain about tools uh, which collects my data like like uh, precisely naming it like Matomoto analytics it's, it's really it's really nice practice and I, I really enjoy also the copyright notice about source code uh, which also gains my trust is the cooperation with Daria uh, that was of course apart from the apps website because uh, or because I, I was uh, looking at it in on a Twitter and uh, Okay. Yeah, uh, GitLab documentation also also great practice. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Yeah, we try to be as open as possible. But you're right. Uh, the context okay. speaker are anonymous. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I see. I skipped. I think I skipped Cassia. Sorry. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Hi. Um, I'm uh, I'm here. Uh, well, some of uh, of my remarks on this topic actually kind of are aligning with uh, what uh, Laura said in the beginning about the, the next stages of, of development. Mm. Uh, but I would like to start with uh, paying my compliments uh, for the idea of having community effort to maintain the tool and kind of uh, making sure it's up to date and uh, it's, mm. it's 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 being uh, widely uh, applied. At least this is this is the idea. actually that was one of my questions. Mm. Uh, and it kind of links uh, also to uh, how this community effort is going to be uh, uh, coordinated. It's like when I was going through the tool, I was wondering, is this, uh, is this tool, uh, the final aim, is it to make it widely used? And if so, uh, I think you have to uh, ensure that all disciplines are being uh, equally, uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, participants are mm. kind of equally uh, distributed mm. among different disciplines. Uh, at this point, I see social sciences being a bit less present, but it's mm. still because it's work in progress. But for the uh, next stages, I was, uh, my suggestion would be to kind of look very closely at how the curation criteria will be further defined. This is what, what Lara said in, uh, mm -hmm. in early in her presentation, but also how you select your curators and moderators to ensure that, that different disciplines are, uh, are present. Because if mm -hmm. Curation is uh, is this community effort uh, based on community effort and the direction that's being given to the marketplace is created partly by by its users. Uh, well, the moment that some of the disciplines are overly uh, overrepresented, it kind of ten will tend to lean in this direction. The uptake mm. within yeah. this discipline will be uh, bigger than in other disciplines. Makes sense, yeah. So that's, I think it would be very, uh, uh, very important to, and kind of links to what I said slides before, like, okay, make sure that it's clear of how the criteria are uh, created. So this transparency about the, how the curation is uh, coming to place uh, with, with the use of community uh, support, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was also thinking uh, in terms of, uh, of governance structure, you, you put some information on the website, how it's going to be uh, linked to uh, European Open Science Cloud, etc. But it's uh, still a bit in between who is really in charge, so who and how, how this whole uh, governance structure look like. I mean, like you will select your uh, curators, moderators. As a user, I would like to know how is it all organized and, and mm. who, is, who is doing this. So this kind of like general thoughts. Mm -hmm. from more, more, more transparency about the processes. And I think you will. I mean, I know that this is uh, uh, this, this is still work in progress, and actually, I would like to play play uh, play some uh, play some compliments to you because I see how immense work, uh, the amount of work that's put into uh, development of the tool, and uh, how many open ends are uh, they are still there, but how many you already solved. So, really, big compliments for for thank doing you. This, uh, this this work. Glad to hear this. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. Let's move to Maurizio. Okay, hi, here I am again. Um, okay, well, uh, language consistency is something that Matteo already uh, spoke a bit about. But I know there have been discussion about the term of usage, uh, the, the usage of specific terms. 
and um, and uh, but some of that discussion is still reflected on the website. Probably should be uh, cleaned out. Um, I would like to to see, but um, for example, in the about section, also the data model used for the uh, and the technology used to build the marketplace. Um, okay. In the terms of uh, provide trust and uh, sustainability, long-term sustainability uh, mm. of of the project, obviously provide credits uh, to the contributors uh, and 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 all the different roles that these kind of contributors uh, may have had and have uh, and are having on the development. And uh, I don't know if the, this can be a uh, a sensible point about uh, the fact of suggesting uh, uh, commercial software. I, I, I spoke a bit about that uh, mm -hmm. before. I think it should be there. I don't know if uh, it's valuable to have uh, some disclaimer. Uh, uh, disclaimer about, uh, you know, it's very popular uh, on the web to have affiliated links and revenue mm -hmm. from uh, links and stuff like that. Uh, but then, uh, well, the community has been already spoken out and uh, it's a crucial and great part uh, that, uh, so it's great that you talk to, to, to have a community uh, mm -hmm. alongside the marketplace. And uh, I was suggesting here also the inclusion of papers, but I saw uh, it was also part of the presentation of Loren before. Uh, so probably there will be uh, as another category, yeah. uh, papers that uh, yeah. are great to be there because uh, uh, they can be linked uh, to, to tools, they can be linked uh, uh, to a training, and they're already, they're already on the web, well curated bibliography, for example, the Daria, the Dero bibliography, and mm. on digital humanities, so provide yeah. the curation and contextualization of that. It's, mm. uh, it's a good yeah. matching uh, mm. with the marketplace. That's it. Thank you. So, compliment anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and last, Vanessa. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would like to um, basically uh, say that I agree with, with uh, what everybody else said so far. Um, I think that the, the funding and the project context is um, clearly stated. Also, who is, is working on, on the tool in terms of um, institutions? So I, I do agree that it would be nice to actually have the names of the people there as well. Um, what I also miss is uh, the immediate um, visibility of where I can where I can add my my things to say. So um, I think a, a relatively prominent button that lets me uh, or that leads me to an explanation of how I can contribute as a user, since this is yeah. what you're going for, um, exactly. would, would probably be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, and this might be, now that I'm looking at it, maybe even more of a design issue than a, a, a governance issue. Uh, what I noticed is that at, on the start page, um, there is no EOSC logo, no shock logo. And also uh, in the about section, I think you failed to actually, you do mention EOSC and shock, but you failed to link there. So, I don't actually have the connection to the EOSC or the Shock website from the marketplace. I can't imagine. Website. I mean, it, this is approved by by our uh, this trust IT. So, but uh, there is a link to the Shock website, and we have the you uh, the yeah, grant. But it, yeah, but it it. I mean, you do. I, it's okay. not it's not missing in principle, but I would expect um, more prominently. Yeah, I would expect a little more self-promotion, so to say, of EOSC and Shock, so that they are more immediately, so maybe that the user gets more immediately the idea to actually also visit their websites to learn more about these, these yeah. projects. Yeah. Um, okay, also, um, mm -hmm. I think one, thing, one thing that would generally be nice would be a last updated. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if this is going to be a very alive infrastructure that is, you know, constantly being contributed to, this might not be yeah, um, exactly. all, so all that, yeah, but, but, you know, websites do age and die. And, yeah, well, um, maybe last update, sorry, I'm, I'm already trying answering, but I mean, last update, it could be maybe on the static pages, but the, the dynamic content, basically, that would be the section last edit where you, because we will be indeed continually uh, adding and, and re materials. Uh, so, uh, but yes, okay, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And in, in, in general, I think a comment section, though, I'm, I'm not 
absolutely sure if I'm if I really think this. So I think as a you know from directly from the user perspective, I would say I would like to have a comment section ideally for each um, resource that you have in there. Uh, from a curator section, I would strongly advise you uh, not to provide this for users. Um, yeah. Do I okay. do I have a? No, a we we skipped the. We are don't, first. We don't have time, but we yeah. You had quite a few points on the legal issues, and we are. Thank you very much for those, and we are aware we will kind of take those up. But uh, I would like to move on now. Um, yeah, so we are a bit running out of time, but uh, so at least one thing that was kind of went through uh, was mentioned by all the testers. Uh, I would like to raise and highlight is this the, the community aspect, um, and I, because uh, so mm, it's difficult. Uh, so we think it's important, uh, uh, and as you, but but the the, the tradition, how we say the experience from previous projects uh, teaches us that this is nice idea, but in practice difficult to make work because everybody, uh, yeah, if everybody can contribute, nobody will come. <laughs> uh, so I'm very glad that all of you kind of suggested where is the where is the contribute button. So I want to contribute as soon as possible. So we hope that there will be more such. But I, we still think we will kind of it will be difficult to find. So what will be the incentives for people to actually uh, contribute um, uh, or in a continuous way? So so we need to. Uh, I think work on that and kind of one aspect will be obviously to lower the threshold as low, low as possible to actually add um, actively uh, any so and that would be you can add suggestions on on new items or you could actually comment on an existing uh, item uh, kind of what your experience around it or uh, suggest a change to information about an existing item so so there should be various ways of how, how you can contribute on actually on an item level. So really contributing to the content. And yes, uh, Cassia, uh, so we already see it in the testers. So we have like the, the bias here for the DH and we will try to work on that. Um, um, yeah, so that the content is, is more balanced. Okay, I would stop here. Uh, if we have one or two questions, then I'm willing to take them up. But otherwise we should move to the, what is in the chat. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any burning questions. No, okay. Yeah, so that means, exactly. So please join. Uh, it will be, you will, we will have to be a bit patient maybe. So there are kind of gradually testers and uh, kind of this will growing and also the features will be coming. But so we will work in, in iterative uh, modes in, in the multiple sessions um, or interaction formats. Um, summarize, uh, yeah, I think I think we can actually move uh, move to the final part, uh, which would be again kind of asking for opinions from you. Um, I would just thank, like to thank again to the to the four uh, four testers for the great work. Uh, I think we touched upon many many very uh, or they kind of really spotted the the many kind of aching points that we already know and and proposed nice things there. Uh, so this was really really very valuable to us. And now I would hand over to uh, Martina and Marieke for, for this final um, poll. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Matei. Thank you, Matei, and all the testers for your uh, extensive work on, uh, on improving uh, the, the SSH Open Marketplace, for providing us feedback uh, and this interesting discussion. It was really, uh, really interesting to uh, to to hear and, and see you uh, uh, discussing the SSH Open Marketplace actual uh, current status. Um, so, as as Matteo already said, uh, we we are pressed for time. Uh, so, but we would like to ask you a few more questions uh, to you, uh, the people that have joined uh, us here today at the ICT SSH Shock Workshop. Um, Martina, can I ask you to uh, show? the Mentimeter questions on the screen.
or Irena. Or yeah, exactly, or Irena. Thank you. So <clears throat> our question to you is: How did you like the setup of the roundtable? Four testers and three topics. So we are we're very interested in knowing what you how you saw this setup. Uh, so um, Irena, correct me if I'm wrong. One is uh, I did not like it, uh, and ten is I liked it. There's a, a grade where you can indicate a five. Oh, exactly. So from one to five. Excuse me. Ah, yeah, sorry. To join the poll, you have to join menti.com and use the, the codes that you see up here. So the 136876. So it seems that, that, uh, that it was appreciated uh, to have this, uh, this setup, Matei. Hmm. Though, the, though the, the, the poll number, so the turnout, vote turnout is not so high, but okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Martina, did we have any other questions or Irena? Irena, do you know if we have any additional questions to be asked or Martina? I, I can play the additional questions if you want, Irena. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for answering this question. So we, we scored a 4.3 out of five uh, for the setup. Uh, it's something that is interest uh, that uh, has, uh, has been appreciated. So Matei, I think this could be uh, something that we can take uh, with us uh, for mm. uh, future exercises. Mm -hmm. So then uh, we uh, apologize, but you have to go to another uh, menti.com. Uh, it's uh, the 791237, uh, in which we'll ask you a few additional questions. So in what ways could the SSH Open Marketplace support your work? Getting new resources. Okay. I'll give you some time to join this new one. Increase visibility. Okay, so let's move on to the next serendipity. Okay, that's a nice one. Get recommendations from research communities for tools, data sets, etc. Visibility of tools and services with a proactive approach, new information on research, show results of our projects, support researchers indeed. Ease research, alignment with triple on the way to EOSC integration. Yes, get rid of all other similar platforms. <laughs> I, I would like to comment on that <laughs> one because that's exactly, <laughs> yeah, that's a nice, nice dream of all of us to have the one to rule them all. But actually, uh, we don't uh, aim for that. So we are aware that we are in an ecosystem, in a, in a federated ecosystem, as Ron said, where. Uh, Many players there are, are there, and many catalogs will be there, and we have to. We are yet another with some specific focus, and and yeah, we all use different tools, um, uh, or many different apps and tools and whatever. So I think we have to get a kind of get past the, the hope of having a, a simple world with one app. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I work on a triple project, and I believe there will be close links to your to your SSH Open Marketplace. Yes, I yes, hope so. there are already strong connections yeah. there. So, uh, so we 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 strongly encourage to to continue that. Uh, understand what is already done in the field, new research ideas, ease search of tools, update knowledge, and reduce time for searching tools technologies. So uh, let's let's skip to the next question. What kind of services and tools would you like to see being or incorporated in the SSH marketplace? It's a bit of a difficult question because there are different kinds. I'm curious. Plagiarism tools is coming, jumped, has jumped up in the chat. Databases. Okay. 
And okay, database is just content as, 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 as services that Tools for data analysis, open refine. Oh, but if you already know open refine, then you wouldn't want to go to marketplace to find it, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah, so maybe this is another point of, of uh, also that was mentioned earlier. So who is the audience? And if I, if I know what I want to use, then I won't go to marketplace. So this is obviously rather for maybe for, for early career researchers or kind of because new and new tools are coming in. So you still um, um, uh, kind of learn, learn new stuff, right? Some that I don't know. That's a nice kind. That's so exactly what we, what we aim for, to give you new input. So this is a, these are useful answers for us, Mate. Uh In a way, yes. Or the, in, in, in that they confirm our, our path, so to say, yes. Okay. But what do you think? Yeah, okay. I think we can. Let's go to the next question. Because yeah. I know we're already one minute over time. Do you have ideas for some incentives to motivate, motivate users to contribute to the creation of the marketplace resources? No financial incentives. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, I mean, oh, okay, I don't want to bias you. Put out any question, please, uh, or any, any suggestion. We can think of everything. Maybe price money. Gamification. Citation on resources. Do I highlight the possibility to promote own work? Yes, even though this shouldn't be a kind of a, a place where you can, where you would uh, put yourself in a. No, okay. Well. Credit and public acknowledge being cited. Create user communities that cooperate in cur on curation and on research. A high quality service will create an ecosystem if it wants to be born. Exactly, this is what we are hoping for, this sense of community. So that if there is a, a critical mass of people who work on the, on, on, on the content, um, that there, uh, yeah, that will yeah, be- Yeah, that aligns. Uh, mm -hmm, sorry? It aligns with the other comment, create a sense mm. of community. Yes, mm. the reputation certificate prestige. So that's uh, related to what Dan also presented. Subscriptions to GH journals. Recognition, promotion of contributor. Open. High quality service will create an ecosystem if it wants to be born. This is interesting. This is almost philosophical. <laughs> a service that wants to be born. I, I would actually say, say that a service is born into an ecosystem uh, and has to well, cope with it, but okay. Well, then you're invited to a dinner with, uh, with the development, with the developer community. <laughs> That's nice. I'm <laughs> not sure if you want that. <laughs> that's, that's a good price. And the option to share my curation efforts with others. We Imagine. only discuss development issues at the dinner, so I'm not, <laughs> it's, it's quite boring. Oh, there are a lot of ideas coming in. Yeah, cool, nice. So, thank you yeah. for all of your badge of 100 just, contributions. Yeah, in the direction of, of, of gamification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank discussion you very much. Groups, develop communication on the areas. Very nice. Thank you all for, for, your, uh, for your input there. Um, I think we can just stop probably here, or do we have more? I don't think we have. That's the last question, no, Martina? Yeah. So, oh, no, what in your view could contribute to establishing trust in resources such as the marketplace? Oh, it's an important question. Yeah. It's worth going over time. Open governance. Okay, check that we have high on our list. Clear information on governance. Yeah. yeah. Promotion by institutions, for example, universities, and individual teaching staff and researchers. Um, but who are trusted users? How do you establish trust? <laughs> Test reports and tools by trusted users. Finding what I'm looking for easily. Create communities. So that's linked to the first, the, the previous question. Transparency on process star system. Okay. 
Mm. Established networks contributions. Yes, yeah, so, so the criteria, curation criteria are meant to be explicit, made explicit clearly, so that it's, mm. it's, it's kind of transparent how we arrive at those, uh, the information and the especially the interpretative thing when we say this is good or this is bad, which we actually don't want to say. This is interesting too, access to user profiles. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Fair well, probably, probably in the sense of, of to see who contributed how much, I would guess, right? That would be probably like in Wikipedia that you see who is a heavy contributor. Hmm. A difficult one, being open and transparent and not promoting advertised project products. Hmm. 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 Enhanced visibility, webinars, talks, social media, and okay, fair services, yeah. And fair services that adherence to best practices uh, and, for example, trust principles. Hmm. Okay. So. Cool. I think we're good. Yeah. How would you expect to be involved in the community we aim at gathering on the marketplace? So you can you can uh, you can opt in here. In, you can. It's a multiple choice question. Yeah. So I would like to be a tester between July and December 2020. I would like to become a curator of the SSH Open Marketplace. I would like to become a member of the editorial team. So we have a very equal spread there. Well, we have four people still. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't see that. Okay. And, uh, and other. We have eight people answering this. Okay. So a lot of people would like to be a tester already now. So for that. Well, a lot is three in that case. <laughs> But yes, okay, it's nice. Of the people that have answered, Mate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to consider the absolute numbers as well. But if, if we get four, te four new testers or three curators, I'm all more than happy. I'm already exactly. wonderful. So we're looking okay. forward for your application. So uh, I know that we're very much over time, Dragan. Yeah. Uh, I would like to just show uh, the last communication um, that we have. Um, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but uh, so just to point out that we have the call for applications and support for repository certification. So that is something that uh, Dan already highlighted earlier, um, the importance uh, to uh, of the trustworthiness. Then. I, leading to all of your your questions just uh, in your input in the in the mentimeter just uh, before uh, please register as a tester um, then uh, in summer uh, there will be a, a consultation platform and uh, that where you can uh, provide us your feedback um, so uh, and then of course on the 3rd of July there is the webinar uh, then rest me to say uh, that I would like to, to close off this, uh, this, uh, this workshop, this two hour workshop. Um, and I would like to thank, first of all, ICT ESSH for the excellent uh, organization and with special thanks to Dragan Ivanovic. It was really, uh, it was absolutely fabulous and uh, it was a pleasure working with you. Um, so we've, we've, we've enjoyed it. Um, and then uh, thank you for all for joining. And I would like to thank again our inspire, the inspiring presentations of our speakers, Ron Decker, Dan Bruder, Lara Barbeau, Matej Dulko, and of course our four uh, SSH Open Marketplace testers, Agnieszka Subinska, Vanessa Hanna Schleger, Maurizio Toscano, and Kasia Karpinska. So thank you for joining today. Uh, and as mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, so the, the presentations will be, uh, uh, will be uploaded to uh, the Shock Zenodo community. They will be made available uh, through ICT SSH and Shock channels, uh, and also the recordings uh, will be made available. Um, and um, thanks again for joining. Uh, and uh, again, uh, enjoy the rest of ICT ESSH. Thank you. Okay, Marike, thank you. I would like also to thank you and the other member of your great project team uh, for selecting the, the, the our conference for organization of your workshop. I think it was of interest to, to the ICT SSH uh, attendees and I 